Hey, I think I've solved the mystery of the strange master cylinder. Welcome to Hack a Week. Last episode, we left off with the brake disc mounted to the front, the calipers there, but the master cylinder that I have here that I cleaned out and got ready to rebuild, the kit didn't look right to me because I was looking in the book at the older CB750K3, which is the 73, and it didn't seem to match this. So I thought, well, someone ordered the wrong rebuild kit. So I got online, I ordered a rebuild kit for a 73 CB750. I got it, guess what? smaller diameter so then i went backwards and thought, hold on a minute and did some searching on the internet till i found a diagram of this particular master cylinder this is from a 1977 cb750 so it turns out i do have the right kit it does have all the proper parts so we'll go ahead and put it together and get it on the bike so here's the parts laid out for the master cylinder the spring will go in first this is what was confusing to me is the, the check valve was missing, but on this later model they don't use a check valve. Uh, so this goes in first, then this seal. This seal is going to go on this piston, then the washer, then the clip, and then the rubber dust boot. Okay, first spring goes in. Easy enough, we'll drop that in there. Then this seal is going to go in, and it will go in with the flared out part in other words, the part that's like this first. So there's a cupped side and there's a flat side. The cupped side will drop in there first. I'm going to put just a tiny bit of silicone lube on it, just a little. And we'll push this down in there. And you have to be careful that you keep it the right way. It's going to want to flip over easy. I'm going to reach in there with a screwdriver and carefully flip it over the right way and give it a push down in there then we can use the piston just to make sure it's in flat okay that's done now we need to put this seal onto here so which means it has to stretch over all this business so a little bit of uh, silicone lube here is going to help put a little bit on the piston itself. I'm going to put just a tiny bit inside the seal here. And it's the same thing, its orientation is like that with the, uh, the flared out part pointing inward. So we're going to just push it on to here as far as we can go. You need to get it over this large part. Okay, so then just kind of pry it over like that. Once you get one part started, you can just keep rolling it on. Just go easy. There we go. Might have to help it out a little bit more here. There we go. Okay, there it is. That's the way it should look when you're all done. Now let's make sure there's no dust or anything on here. Clean this off a little. Got some black paint on that finger. <laughs> Doing a little painting earlier. Now we're going to push the piston down in there. Same as the other seal. Make sure that that seal gets pushed in there the way it's supposed to. And it's going to go past this little spot right here where there's this notch for the brake lever. And you want to make sure that as it goes in, past that point, that the seal doesn't catch on that lip and fold it over. So you need to reach in there with the little screwdriver. Gently make sure it's in. And then push it on in there. I've got a little bit of brake fluid in this brake fluid can cap. I'm going to put some down into that bore. Actually, I'm going to pour some right in there. See if I can lubricate the inside of this just a little bit and help that 
that uh, piston slide in there a little better. I'm going to put some brake fluid on the seal itself too. Okay, let's give this one more try. It's already pushing in there a little easier. There it goes. That did the trick. So it's got to go down in there all the way. This is where it gets a little tricky. Okay, the piston's in there, not pushed down all the way, but the next thing to go on is this washer. Then there's a circlip that goes in here. Oops. And I'm just going to squeeze it together enough to get it down into the bore. If you're taking one of these apart, you're going to need some circlip players that will reach way down inside that bore. Okay, that's started enough, I think. I'm going to push this down in just a little further. Okay, now I'm going to take the whole works and just plunge it down in until I hear the clip go click. Okay, got a 12 millimeter socket now. It's a little bit smaller. There it went. That's it. It's in there. It's in the groove down in there. The piston moves okay. I've already got the groove cleaned out in here for the O-ring, get the O-ring put in. By the way, all the noise in the background is Lisa out here in the shop today getting creative doing some metal sculpting. She's um, in the process of building a turtle out of a DirecTV satellite dish. We recently told uh, DirecTV to take a hike <laughs> and switched over to a Roku box. And we got to keep the dish, so we're tearing it apart and turning it into other stuff. At some point, I'll have to uh, show that to you when it's all done. Okay, we've got the uh, the O-ring in there. So now we're going to put the reservoir on. This plastic reservoir is held on with a couple of uh, screws. It's a pretty tight fit in there. Uh, it's got to line up with the screw holes, so let's see if it's going to go in. Yeah, good deal. Now there's two places in there where the screws have to go. Get my JIS screwdriver here. Get those put in. Okay, the reservoir is on. Let's put the cap on there. Okay, reservoir in place. Rubber boot still has to go on. I almost missed that. It goes on the uh, the plunger there, the piston. Again, a little bit of silicone grease on this end of the thing. And it has to go in there and go over the tip of that. Put a little bit around here too. This has got a piece of uh, wire or a washer built into it that keeps it nice and round. We're going to push that down in. Use a small screwdriver to help push the rubber part past the end of the piston. And when you're all done it should look like that in there. And you want to make sure you push that rubber boot all the way down in there until it hits the bottom. And we're done. That is a fully rebuilt master cylinder ready to mount up on the handlebars. Alright, we're ready to mount this up. Get this on there, keeping in mind the angle for the uh, brake lever. And there is a there's a little bit of a notch on one of them. I'm going to put that down because it kind of helps with that wire harness where it comes out of the uh, combination switch there. I've got a couple six millimeter bolts that are going to go in here. I'm just going to leave these snug for now. We'll adjust it later. That's good enough for now. Time for the handle. I'm going to put just a tiny bit of grease right here where it pushes against the piston. I've got some grease in that part and I'm going to put this in like so. Now there is a bushing that goes in here where this hits against 
I don't have that part in hand right now. I have ordered it. But let's go ahead and get this bolt in. And just tighten that up where it just bottoms out. Okay, and now this part goes on. This is normally plated with zinc, it's just silver, but this one was a bit rusty. I hit it with a wire brush and painted it with some uh, caliper paint, black paint. That little uh, dimple right there would go into the hole where the bushing goes. We'll get to that in another video. But this bolt sticks through the bottom. There's a nut that goes on, so I'm going to put this plate on. I'm going to put the nut on and just tighten that down. And that's what's going to lock that bolt in place and keep it from backing out. There we go. We got a working master cylinder mounted up. Now we'll get the brake line on there. And we got a banjo bolt to put on. We're going to put a crush washer on there. Put it through the banjo fitting. Drop the ratchet on the floor. Well, that's optional. Screw that into the end of the master cylinder. That should be tight enough. We're ready to fill this up and bleed the brakes. Got some DOT 34 here. 34 as in it's rated for dot three or dot four. All that dot rating stuff is all about the boiling point of the brake fluid. <clears throat> dot 3 has a lower boiling point than dot 4. Brake fluid will, uh, will mix with water. Water can collect in brake fluid over time. So if you've got disc brakes that get really hot, you should use dot 4 because if they get real hot in the caliper, if it gets hot enough to the point where it's boiling the brake fluid while well, the water turns to vapor once that happens now you've got a compromised brake system and the brakes start to fade so if you got disc brakes use dot four i have a piece of vinyl tubing stuck on the bleeder screw and that runs down into a bucket down there i've got a pair of vice grips uh kind of holding it because it wants to curl back up that's going to hold any fluid that comes out i'm using clear tubing so you can actually see the fluid as i do this uh, I've been through this one before in another video on the uh, the Sabre the VF700S. What I'm doing up above here is pumping the uh, master cylinder, just moving the brake lever a couple times, squeezing it a few times, hold it in. We're going to let it uh, stay in while we open that up. See if we can get some fluid going down through there. Sometimes too, just uh, real short strokes like this will get the job done quick. See the bubbles coming up? Bubbles are coming out, fluid's going in. It may take a while, but you'll get there. Be patient. Now we're finally starting to get some schmutz out of there. There's bound to be a little bit of rust and crud inside this line because it was a used line and a used splitter up there but now we're getting some fluid going through there and we just want to keep going until we don't see any more air now I've got to dump more in in the reservoir because it's coming out the bottom so we got to keep the reservoir full don't let it go empty it'll suck air in and you'll have to start all over you see those air bubbles moving and when I let off, they flow backwards. We've almost got it. Now what we're going to do is close the valve, hold it, pump it up, hold it firm, release it, and then close it again before I let off the lever up top. Now I can let off the lever. I'm going to pump it up once more, open the valve, close the valve, then release the lever. And that's it, I've got a good firm brake lever up here. I've got the brake lever adjusted where I want it. So now we'll tighten up the clamp. 
And I'm not putting a torque wrench on this. I'm just using my little quarter inch ratchet. You can pretty much feel what tight enough is. That should be just right. Got a functional front brake now. Okay, let's give it the spin test. And it works. Yay! Okay, that's about it for this week. Just a short and sweet one. Uh, the master cylinder rebuild. Now you know how to do that. And I'm glad I got it done because now I have operational brakes front and rear and I can move on. Next video is going to be the instruments. I've got some new gauge faces we're going to put on there, put them back together, get them mounted up up in the tree. Then we'll move on to, uh, let's see, rear shocks, seat, rear fender, get that hooked up. And I think we're going to have maybe a couple more miscellaneous items. We'll probably have like a final miscellaneous video. And then it's time to take it and get it inspected, get a license plate on it, and get it on the road. Okay, well, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the donations. Be sure to like the video. And until next time. I think I solved the mystery of the mysterious <laughs> mystery. <laughs> <laughs>